normally you're given about 15 minutes to present and these would be the 12 slides that I would recommend and we're going to go through each of these you got 15 minutes generally they leave you alone and let you speak so these uh, uh, slides have to be well thought out they have to be brief and quickly understood and then you have to be able to talk about them without sitting there and reading the slides fair enough so the first slide is the introduction and that's going to have your company name your logo you know who the presenter is and maybe a, a one sentence description of the business you got 30 seconds boom you move on next you get to the problem and you describe what's happening out there that deserves their attention and how you're gonna uh, understand that problem and come up with a solution and so that's your technology pitch now for the engineers in the room beware I, I tease you I love you guys but you've got a minute 30 okay I can't say hello in a minute 30 you know what I mean and let alone address the technology it's so hard to do but remember your investor may not understand your technology may not actually care about your technology they're in this to make money so your solution how you're going to deliver it what the features are boom you're out of there in a minute 30 then you move on to the customer now your uh, investors gravitate to this because they really under want to understand that you understand who your customer is and they're looking for laser specifics about that customer are they tall are they short are they left-handed are they right-handed are they uh, from Pacoima are they from Fullerton uh, and like the worst thing you could say here would be everybody's gonna want my product they will laugh you off the podium okay so you really want to dr drill down and talk about the growth of the industry all those type of things competitive landscape I'll give you a what's the worst thing you could say here I have no competition I am unique they will laugh you off the stage because there's always substitutes right that are available and what I have learned through uh, the entrepreneurship effort and at the incubator is when you're looking at a problem I can almost guarantee you that there are a thousand other people looking at that same problem and trying to solve it too by the way competition's good because it validates th that there is a marketplace right others see it th there's an opportunity to make money right well, they want to know you have a competitive advantage and a competitive advantage would be what you do different or how you do things differently okay uh, example of different would be one day we had music on CDs the next day we had mp3 right that was a huge disruptive difference now doing things differently would be Starbucks so they're providing you a place to come have community uh, have a uh, five dollar scone uh, there's Wi-Fi and they offer you a 50 cent cup of coffee for four dollars so that's doing things differently they didn't radically change much they just kind of repackaged it now that's a very viable strategy Uh, now since you're uh, in the marketplace talking to people this is where you can brag about your current customers and your partners this is pretty important because this is validation that you've got traction business model how you're going to make money uh, and if you think about it a, a business model is where you provide a solution you give value to someone and in exchange they give you money right that's pretty cool so uh, some businesses are transactional like so when you go to the uh, Chevy dealer 
and you buy a car, it's a one-time transaction, right? So their business model would be transactional based. Oh, they got a couple other business models. So they make your car complicated enough to fix that you've got to go back to the Chevy dealer to use their service. Oh, by the way, you're going to be much better off if you have uh, a, uh, see, guaranteed original General Motors parts, what they manufacture. So that's at least three business models that they have. And many of the successful new companies actually have multiple business models when you start looking at how they go to market. Current status. So we've gathered here today. I wanted to let you know that we've secured a proof of concept. The dog eats the dog food. We've established our partners. Uh, we uh, have a uh, patent uh, at play. It's patent pending. We're in discussion uh, with the, uh, the, our attorney and the feds. And our product uh, is being delivered to its first customers and we're getting feedback. Financial projections, a little bit of a debate on this one. Uh, one piece of debate, is, one element, is they're bogus. Who's kidding who? You have no idea what your sales and what your costs are going to be. But this is like a best guess. And so it's typical you offer a, at least a three-year set of financials. Now, the CFOs in the room and the bankers, honestly, you can never make them happy. They'll want five years, they'll want to know cash flow, and all that is is a request for more information that you can do outside of this presentation. So it's an outlook of what you're doing. I think more important is given the, uh, the curve you have on sales, what are the assumptions that went into that? Why do you think you're going to grow and grow fast? Uh, and you might have a graphic, something like this, kind of a, a primitive, high-level, pro forma, profit and loss statement. This may be the most important slide on the page. Remember, they're investing because of the jockey, not because of your cool app, right? They want to know who you are, and not that you wear the CTO hat, but that you've done this before, that you know the customers, that you understand it. And this is by uh, founding team members. So this one really is very, very important. And okay, if you don't have a complete team, you say so. Say, well, we got the engineering guy, we got the CTO, I'm the CEO. Uh, candidly, we need a top-notch marketing person to join the team. They love that. They love the candor of it, and they start thinking, who could I introduce to this team? Funding. Yeah, this is kind of what they're all about. So they want to know what money have you received to date, if any. Uh, how much money are you seeking? Uh, are you looking for... Uh, now, with an investor panel, it infers uh, an investment, but you might also look for other types of money, including loans. Uh, and uh, given the need for 500,000 uh, bucks, what uh, are you expecting uh, to give up in terms of equity? Now, whatever you say to the investor will be wrong, okay? Because they're going to tell you how much they're going to offer you uh, and uh, what they expect in return, in terms of return on investment and equity. But you, t you give your first shot. So you tend to be conservative on it. Uh, they want to know that this is a strong investment, that there's going to be a decent rate of return. And so you might say, we're looking for $500,000. Uh, in exchange for that, we're going to offer 25% equity. Uh, we are expecting a 10 to 15 times return in five years. And that's based upon the performance of the other uh, companies in our category. And exit is always uh, implicit. So the investor wants to give you money and then wants a miracle to happen and then you for you to sell out. Otherwise, they don't get their money back. Why, 
Why would they hang around? Why would they do this, right? And if there's time left, usually you run out of time here. <laughs> you summarize a few of the key points. And then at that time, you say something like, and it's been my pleasure to uh, introduce my company today. Do you have any questions? Parump, 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 right? Uh, now, I recommend in anticipation of those questions, you have long play uh, slides as backup. So, you know, so the, uh, the CFO type starts needling you about your financials. And then what you can do is dig right, oh yes, I, I have that for you. And right then and there on the spot, give them some more if they want. And, uh, and this is also if you forget to say something, etc. So these are just, you could whip out in the uh, Q&A period.